So while EV charging stops aren't as simple as just stopping at a gas station as needed to fill up, it's not as problematic as people would have you believe. This myth that there's no charging infrastructure is severely outdated. Seriously, there's chargers literally everywhere now. I mean, it does take some pre-planning, but with the right prep work, you can take even a 13-year-old Nissan Leaf with a half-degraded battery from one side of the country to the other, as long as you avoid these mistakes. And the first mistake is not using route planning software. So with a gas car, like I said, you just keep driving until you get low on gas and then stop at a gas station. Can't quite do that with EVs. With EVs, you need to be more intentional in your stopping points. So Teslas actually have built-in software that will route you to fast chargers from point A to point B. So say for instance, you're driving all the way from Ontario to Saskatchewan, it'll plot each charging stop you need along the way. And as you either get better efficiency or worse efficiency on the go, it'll adjust as needed and change your stopovers to be either sooner or later, depending. Other EVs, especially older ones, might not have this functionality, in which case I highly suggest an app called a Better Route Planner. It has pretty similar functionality where it routes you to charging stops, you set what your vehicle is, what compatible chargers it can use, different filters, different settings, and you can either plug in all the values manually, especially for an older EV, or you can connect it right to your EV through something like an OBD2 dongle. And then much like the Tesla, it'll also read input from the car and change your stopover locations as needed. And if you notice when it's picking the charging stops, it tries to keep you at the lower end of the battery percentage. It'll have you stopping at like 10, 20% battery capacity because EVs actually charge the fastest when they're close to empty. So by trying to optimize for that, it'll keep you at the charger for as little time as possible to get the most amount of charge. So every few hundred kilometers, you're only going to be stopping for like 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. The second mistake is not preconditioning your battery. Tesla's and some other manufacturers have it do this automatically, others you have to manually trigger it, and some for whatever reason don't do it at all. So what is battery preconditioning? Batteries, when you hit a charger, in order to charge at the fastest possible speed, they need to be at a optimal temperature. So when battery preconditioning kicks in, either because it detects that you're on your way to a charger or you manually initiate the process, it'll start heating or in some cases cooling your battery to that preset temperature so that as soon as you get to the charger and plug in, it'll just go ham and immediately hit your peak charging speed. And if you don't do that, then when you first plug in, especially on a cold day and you haven't been running the EV for very long, your charging speed will be super slow until the battery heats up from resistance while charging. However, this is really only a problem with the slow charging during the first leg of a long drive. Your first charging stop is probably going to be super slow, but after your first charge, as you keep on driving and charging, your battery is going to stay warm, so it won't affect you throughout the rest of the day nearly as much. The third mistake is not having the right charging adapters. It's not like gas where there's just one universal connection connector standard, although we are moving in that direction. The more adapters you get for different plug types gives you more options for charging. Pretty much all EVs are designed to work with standard J1772 slow chargers. If you plan on staying a lot of campsites like I do, the two most common types of outlets there are TT30P RV outlets and NEMA 1450, which is also known as a dryer outlet. If you drive a Tesla and you get yourself a CCS adapter, you pretty much double your fast charging options. Another app I highly suggest is one called PlugShare, and if you filter that to the types of outlets that you can plug into, it shows you all of your options close to where you are. Number four is ignoring aerodynamics. Not so much a thing about charging itself, but definitely has to do with efficiency. Unlike gas cars, which are most efficient at highway speeds, EVs are actually the opposite. They are the most inefficient at highway speeds. Speeding up just a little bit actually has a huge impact. For instance, if you go from 100 kilometers an hour to 120 kilometers an hour, that can actually add 15 to 20% reduction in your range. If you're concerned about making it to your next charging stop, just drop speed, go the speed limit, you'll be surprised how much of a boost that gives you. In fact, quite ironically, on a longer trip, going the speed limit will actually probably get you to where you need to go faster in the long run, once you factor in charging stops and efficiency loss. Roof rack, cargo pods, and other large airflow blockers are another huge impact to your range. Having a big blunt cargo pod up top can affect your range at highway speeds by an additional 30%, that's one third. So if you're bringing a bunch of cargo with you, try to keep as much of it in the vehicle as possible, because weight isn't so much an effector of your range as the aerodynamics are. Otherwise, try and get EV-specific cargo pods that are designed to be super aerodynamic and impact your range as little as possible. And number five, not factoring in charging to your overnight accommodations. Unlike gas cars, EVs can be plugged in overnight, and when you wake up, it's good to go with 
full range, a full quote unquote tank of gas. And because EVs are starting to absolutely take off in popularity, a lot of hotels and motels actually offer charging for EVs on site as an incentive to stay with them. And even if they don't, if you park near an exterior wall outlet and ask nicely, I'm sure they'll let you plug in. And even a standard wall outlet can give you a significant bump to your range overnight. And if you're staying at campgrounds, pick a campground that has an RV electrical hookup if you can, or even a standard wall outlet, same deal. So the extra time spent charging on a road trip seems like it would take up quite a lot of extra time, but stop and think about it for a sec. If you're driving a normal gas car, all the time you spent stopping to use the bathroom, get food, check the scenery, stretch your legs. If you sync that up with your charging stops, you'd be surprised at how close EVs actually come to gas cars in terms of taking the same amount of time on a long road trip. Put another way, think of it like this. If it was such an inconvenience, why are so many people switching to EVs? 